about some new AMD CPUs? Now the FX line has been around for a long time, like several years as a matter of fact, and instead of coming out with some brand new enthusiast crazy parts, what they've done is they've lowered the parts on all the existing FX um, you know, CPUs, and then they've introduced a few new parts that are kind of interesting. So we're gonna take a look at these. Now, first off, there's the AMD FX 8370 coming in at around 200 bucks. If you guys see this video in several months, it might be on sale. But right now it is 200 bucks. And uh, what that's done is it's brought the 8350 down in price to 179, making it a really uh, kind of an interesting part right now because sub $200 and it competes with a lot of other parts that are $60 more expensive. So. That's getting more interesting. The 8320 dropped down to about 146.99. And then we have two new parts. A lot of people complained about the FX uh, parts guzzling a lot of power. And you know, despite me and, and despite Wendell and everybody else out there who's saying, guys, it's not that big a deal. We did a test last year where we showed that the 8350 was only gonna be five or six extra dollars per year compared to the comparable i5. Yes, we were comparing things to comparable things. Well, you know what, they listen, they're like, okay, so everyone wants a, a, a lower power part. So instead of going in the one direction where the 9590 and all that stuff where they went up to a 220 watt TDP and just made you crazy, they decided, you know what, we've got our 125 watt parts like the 8350 and the 8320 and also now the 8370. Uh, let's give them an energy efficient part. So now we have the 8370E and also the 8320E. We've got the 8370E in the house. We've got the 83. Uh, 70 in the house and we also have the 9590 uh, we're gonna play with all of these but I mean really the bottom line here is that in, the, in this price range even though it's not new architecture and even though it's the same thing we've seen before it's still really attractive especially for gamers for productivity people and people who have deep pockets and really need to get a lot of stuff done well Intel's got their their new stuff out that's like a thousand dollars and that stuff just kind of kills everything but price to performance you know, here you go. Let's look at the uh, the actual frequencies on, on uh, these new CPUs. Now the 8370 uh, turbo is up to 4.3 as opposed to uh, 4.2 on the 8350. So it's only 100 megahertz faster. From my personal testing, I found it to be much easier to overclock. It seems like at least the part that I have, uh, and there's not as much of a silicon lottery in these AMD parts as there is with the current Intel parts, but uh, it's just, very, very, very easy to overclock. So there is a bit of overhead on these 8370 parts and there better be because these pile driver, you know, CPUs have been out for a while. AMD, you guys better have perfected it by now if you're gonna do it this many years. And now the AMD 8370 is interesting because it also, um, you know, it's got the same amount of cash as the 8370 and it goes all the way up to 4.3, just like the 8370, but the 8370E, um, has a much lower range at 3.3 is the base and then it turbos up to 4.3 and um, I'm not gonna put all the benchmarks in in this video but throughout all of our benchmarking it has been about two to three frames per second behind the um, the 8370 and maybe one to two frames per second behind the 8350 so it's still good but if you know you're not really worried about you know lower power I guess then go ahead and get the 8370 because it's the same exact price and you're gonna get you know three or four extra francs per second. So for our test system, we're gonna be using the ASRock um, Killer. It's the ASRock Fatality Killer uh, 990FX motherboard. And uh, that one pretty much has just about everything you need uh, in a motherboard. There's tons of options on that one. We've got 16 gigabytes of HyperX Fury memory in here, clocked at 1866. And this stuff's about as good as it gets for the money, so I can't complain there. We also have the Kingston HyperX uh, 3K, it's the 120 gigabyte SSD. And that one's been tried and true, we've been using that a lot. And for the graphics card, we have the Asus R9280X. And uh, that is the DirectCU 2 edition, slightly overclocked. So pretty well balanced system and keeping everything cool, we have the uh, Nepton L280, 280L that is from Cooler Master. And last but not least, the power supply. Got some clean power coming from the 1000 watt Tesla from Fractal Design. So. That's the system we have there, and the test bench is our Lee and Lee test bench, of course. Now, as far as benchmarks go, we are going to look at the uh, 8370 pretty much exclusively in this video, but we have some videos coming up. In fact, we've already done a lot of testing. We've put the 8370, 8370E, um, and we put, a, we put those together, or I guess against the, um, the Intel i5 4690K, because that one's a little bit more expensive 
but I wanted to see exactly what we could do in a gaming system price per dollar. So that's going to be coming up very soon, another i5 versus AMD 8-core video with these new parts. But right now, let's go ahead and take a look at Bioshock Infinite at 1080p, DirectX 11, everything maxed out completely. At the stock clock, uh, the min-max was 31 and the, the max was 77, uh, and um, the average was 51.76. And then we overclocked this thing to 4.7. It was very easy. I just went in, uh, changed the multiplier, and... Um, the only thing I needed to really do was bring up the voltage to about 1.4, 1.4 something. That's kind of a nice thing about these. You just kind of bring the voltage up to somewhere between 1.4 and 1.5 if you want to go to 4.7 to 5.0 in that range. And I also hit 4.8 very easily doing the same thing. Uh, but you do that. And then for stability, I went in and made sure that my uh, memory had a little bit more voltage. And uh, the one thing I could have probably done was play around with the cache and the uh, you know the hyper transport voltage as well but um whatever anyway overclocked 4.7 bioshock is uh, 32 minimum 76 maximum and 52.92 uh, for the average then we tried out lichdom battle mage uh, 1080p completely maxed out all the settings uh, at stock it was 51 minimum 59 maximum and 55.56 for the average so very smooth gameplay there. It was just, you know, there's not a lot of highs and lows and that sort of thing, which I, that, that's kind of the main thing that I look for. If you see a lot of really low numbers on the minimum, you know that there's gonna be some stuttering here and there, but th that one's nice and smooth. Uh, when we overclocked it, the minimum was 51 again, the max was 62, and uh, the average was 56.08. So almost the same performance with the overclock. In Thief, running at the stock settings, we got 23.9 as the minimum, 61.3 as the max, and 39.5 as the average. At 4.7 gigahertz, uh, 28.7 was the minimum, so a little better there. 61.3 was the max, which is the same, and 44.3, so we did have a better average there. These seemed to benefit, and we haven't done our mantle testing yet, but the mantle testing will come very soon. Trying to, I like that one because it's an indie game and it doesn't really favor, you know, any particular hardware, so I, I always like to test that one. Plus all the effects that are going on in that game, it can get pretty taxing. At the stock, 67 was the minimum, 69 was the maximum, and 68.32 was the uh, the average. So that's some uh, pretty pretty nice gameplay right there. At 4.7 gigahertz, it was 67 as the minimum, 69 as the maximum, and then 67.8 as the average. So again, about the same there, but took a Tiny hit on the average for some reason after the overclock. Maybe some error, errors were being spit out. Maybe I need to change my cache frequency or something. We ran the uh, Valley benchmark and had similar results. Where as you can see, um, the, the minimum and the maximum were almost identical, but the stock had 40.6 as the average and the 4.7 gigahertz was 40.4. So slightly lower there on the overclock, which is kind of weird. I want to mention that this uh, we were using the Nepton L, or the Nepton 280L uh, as our cooling unit from Cooler Master. And that kept everything really, really cold. So I was, I don't know if we ever got into the 40s. It was like 39 degrees Celsius. So just really nice and cold. Uh, the last thing I wanted to do is I wanted to do some productivity uh, or just some, you know, crunching. So we decided to use Handbrake. And Handbrake does like the eight core CPUs. And uh, at the stock, Handbrake rendered a 10 minute straight out of the camera uh, video file, straight out of the Panasonic here. Um, and uh, you guys can get more information about all this other over at the website, but uh, it rendered that in four minutes and 32 seconds. At 4.7 gigahertz, it was four minutes and 23 seconds. So we gained a little bit there, got you know nine extra seconds uh, when we when we did the overclock. But over a long period of time, that can add up if you're you know rendering a full movie or something like that. Now, one thing I do want to mention here was that, like I said, the 80. 370e was two or three frames per second behind at every single test so if you're willing to sacrifice that because you want the extra power you want the you know lower power then there you go but i don't know most power users and gamers i think are just, just going to go for the 8370 one thing i want to mention here though is handbrake it, it, it did not do nearly as well handbrake that same test took five minutes and 15 seconds so I, I noticed that, you know, in a lot of the productivity applications, it did seem to be slightly slower, but not insanely slower. So what we're looking at here are uh, a couple of new parts and just the new prices mainly. I mean, I, th I think the new prices are, are kind of more of a, a big deal to me than the new parts, just because now the, they're really attractive. 
especially if you're gonna be building a gaming rig for the holidays. It's, it's, a, it's, it's just so easy to go grab one of those CPUs and then the extra money you save by you know, not getting a more expensive CPU, you can put that straight into your graphics card. These also do compare you know, in, in games. They, they're very similar to the, even the, the AMD FX 6300. Just the eight core gives you slightly more horsepower and uh, you know, it's snappier when you're, when you're um, doing things like editing and rendering and using 7-zip and all that. And the other thing that I noticed that was snappier uh, was, was streaming. Streaming is uh, is really snappy on these eight cores, and we'll do that test as well when we when we talk about the i5 versus the eight core. I'm not going to make, make any predictions right now because we have that's one test we have not done. But so far, it's been doing pretty good versus the i5, uh, especially when you consider the price point. So that's kind of the the way uh, I think AMD is going to have to spin this since this pile driver has been out for quite a while. Uh, until they get some brand new technology, it it is really just you know good for the money. And, uh, you know, it's up to you guys what, what you want to get, but stay tuned for our i5 um, video for i5 versus the, uh, the 8 core. I think you'll be excited and you'll yell and scream because uh, you, oh, you guys are get crazy about this stuff. I think it's hilarious. So that's pretty much it. And I'll see you guys in the forums. If you guys have questions or want to see any other tests, let me know. Uh, we've already done a lot of videos on the 9590, and that's what's in Pistol's rig right now. And she uses it a lot for streaming, and it does a good job. So... Uh, there's that as well. We can throw that in there. If you guys want to see some tests on that as well, let me know. All right, guys, some interesting parts, some interesting conversations coming up, and we've got plenty of stuff coming. As a matter of fact, lots of builds, and I'm going to be using these in some builds. So stay tuned for all of that. Questions, comments, hate mail, all that kind of thing, just put it in the forum, and I'll be sure to look, sure to look for it. See you guys next time.